welcome to black body radiation that's waves lesson 14 and just a reminder that it's a triple science only lesson so you don't need this for combined science so for the lesson you'll need a pen paper or exercise book and if you have got a mobile phone and you don't need it to view this video on then make sure it's out of the way Straight into the starter then, so question one on your Google Doc. Explain in detail what's happening below. Hopefully that should ring some bells from previous lessons. Just going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, let's see what you've written. So we've got areas of different colour here. This is taken with an infrared camera. So the infrared camera converts infrared wavelengths into visible wavelengths. So what we can see from that picture is the parts of that house that are emitting the most infrared radiation. So the whitest part is probably around the top of the chimney, lot, chimney line and the roof line. So most amount of infrared radiation emitted from there. We've got a fair bit from the windows, particularly at the tops of the windows and a little bit under the top of the roof there. So we can see the areas with the red and the white are the greatest emitters of infrared radiation. Outcomes then. So quite a straightforward challenge outcome, but important nevertheless. It's just to define the term black body ra uh, radiation. It's a new term, you've not come across it before, and it's most likely to be asked as a one or a two mark question. And then Aspire, there's going to be some examples of quite tricky graphs and you need to be able to explain how the wavelength and intensity of an emission depends on the temperature of an object. So in other words, how does the radiation that comes off a hotter object, how is that different from a cooler object? So question two, again, looking back at a previous lesson, what factors can affect the rate of transfer of infrared radiation. So I've deliberately put you a white radiator there so that you should be able to think back to the infrared lesson is what factors can affect the rate that energy is transferred by radiation away from that radiator. I'm gonna give you one minute. see what you've got so if you've got the temperature of the radiator you'd be right if you'd got the surface area of the radiator you'd also be right I'm hoping though that you've got color if I change that white radiator to a black radiator the infrared radiation that it's emitting would be greater so I've just flipped that you notice the the amplitude is greater so there's more energy in that wave so there's more energy coming off that um, when it's black. So black, particularly matte black, are very good emitters of radiation. So that's a factor that I hope you've included. So colour and wavelength then. So you should know, should remember that white light is made up of many colours. We normally call them the seven colours of the spectrum. There's a lot more than that. We divide them into seven because there's only seven that we really give names to. But there's a huge, a huge number, infinite number really in there. So 
if we shine the white light through that glass prism there, it will split up, it will disperse. So I want you to list for question three, the seven colours of the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum in order, top to bottom, as they would appear on there. If you could draw the lines for the light as it goes through and the colours separate there, that would be even better. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds, so quick as you can. So the colours that you should have had, so you start getting the dispersion there caused by the refraction is red at the top, violet at the bottom. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Richard of your gave battle in vain. Or Roy Gerbiv, if that's of any help to you. So those colours there, the reason we see colour is because colour is to do with wavelength. So the red in that spectrum is a greater wavelength than the violet. In fact, because the red has got a greater wavelength, its frequency is smaller. There's less waves per second. So wavelength affects the colour. But also if I go past the red end of the spectrum there, I've deliberately carried the wave on. There in the electromagnetic spectrum, we would get infrared. So infrared has got a wavelength that is smaller than the colours of the spectrum that our eyes are capable of seeing. And then at the other end, Violet, the wavelength is smaller than our eyes are capable of seeing. So it's a continuing spectrum all the way along. Colour is to do with wavelength. So I'm just going to do a little demonstration now using that prism and the spectrum is to see if we can detect, to see if we can measure the infrared radiation. So we've got a power pack connected to a ray box. The ray box, we've got a single slit. The single slit is producing a single beam of light, which is going into the prism. As it goes into the prism, the light slows down, different wavelengths slow down by different amounts, and then they split, so we get dispersion spreading out. So we've got the visible spectrum there, and then obviously that's all we can see, because that's the visible spectrum. But on the red, if you look at the red, and I place this blackened thermometer, so not in the actual beam of the colours that you can see, but next to it, we should be placing the blackened bulb of that thermometer into the infrared spectrum. And because it's blackened, it should be absorbing infrared radiation and it's rising so far in the amount of time that I've been talking. It's gone up half a degree. I'll leave it a little bit longer. It's on 22 now, started at 21, it's gone up a degree. So that's evidence that there we have radiation infrared radiation with a wavelength that is greater than the red visible part of the spectrum. Okay, next, another demonstration. So this time I'm going to use a filament, filament bulb and slowly turn the power up. So turn the voltage up so that we've got more and more current going through it so the temperature will heat up. So we're going to have a look at how the temperature of that metal filament affects the colour of the light that comes off. Bulb's off at the moment, slowly going to switch it on and increase the voltage. So there is a voltage across the filament in that bulb now, which means there's a current flowing through there. Looks like the bulb's off. It's not off. We'll come back to this point at the end. So I'm going to slowly increase the amount of current flowing through the filament. stop there so we've got a low amount of current so a relatively low temperature so we can see now we've got light emitted you can see it but that light it's definitely red I'll see if i can get it a touch colder it's definitely the red end of the spectrum remember red is a lower wavelength so let's increase the temperature orange richard of Let's increase the temperature again. York. 
Now, as we go higher, it's not suddenly going to go green, and that's because we're, getting, we're now getting a mixture of different wavelengths. So as I increase it hotter and hotter, I'm going to turn away and leave you to suffer. It's now becoming yellowy white, and as I get hotter, we should see what we class as being a white light, which is a mixture of the colours. So, two things are happening. As it is cooler, it's giving off a lower intensity of light, and that light is of a lower wavelength. And as I increase the temperature, we get a greater intensity of light, it's brighter, and the wavelengths increase. So I'll go back to the bit that I said I'd go back to. So it's still current flowing, still current flowing, still current flowing. Now, it looks like that's off. It's not off, but it is now only emitting Infrared radiation looks invisible because it's not giving off any visible wavelengths. So let's just summarise what we saw then. So when the, the filament lamp was very low current, it was quite cold. So it was on and it was still emitting radiation, but infrared radiation. In other words, there was still some heat infrared coming off but not visible light. You couldn't see any glowing of the filament. And then we turned it up. As we turned it up, we started to get a dull red that started to go orange as we got more current through it. So as the temperature increases, it starts to get red, red hot. Then hotter still, it started to get red, orange, yellow, and then that yellowy white, which is the color that we end up with when it's at full temperature. So we've gone from no visible light to red visible light to white. And that white that we see in the bottom picture of the bulb there is when the bulb is giving off lots of different colours and those colours are mixing to give us the white. All right, there you go. So this is the challenge outcome we talked about, is being able to define what black body radiation is. OK, so I want you to imagine you've got a hollow sphere, so it could be a football, inflated football with a hole in it. Inside, it's painted matte black. So matte black is a very good absorber of radiation. So we've got going into the hole, into the hollow sphere, we've got the radiation going in. And as it goes in, it bounces about inside so that all of that radiation is absorbed inside the surface. So no radiation is emitted. It all goes in and gets stuck. So we say that if we've got an object and all the radiation that falls on it is absorbed and nothing's reflected, we call it a perfect black body. So it's an object that's just soaking up, that's absorbing all the radiation that falls on. OK, so not only do objects emit infrared radiation, but they also absorb it. So if you've got an object, so just imagine this, this black ball floating about in the universe. It will stay at constant temperature if it's absorbing and emitting the radiation at the same rate. So if it's got... Any radiation that's coming in is then being emitted, it'll stay at the same temperature. If it's absorbing more, it'll heat up. If it's emitting more, it'll cool down. Now that's going to be important later when we look at the factors affecting the temperature of the Earth, which is an also a question that they could ask you about. So remember, objects that are good at absorbing are also very good at emitting. So matte black, a perfect black body will absorb all the radiation that hits it. So that's your definition of black body radiation. And that means it's a very good emitter. Let's look at an application then. So this is, well, I think it's a lot more interesting. We'll see how you feel. So if you look at stars, you will see that they're not a uniform colour. So on that deep space picture that you can see there, you've got some are on orangey red, some are white, some are almost bluey white. So there are different colours and the different colours are due to the different temperatures. So if we look at four classifications of stars there, we've got a red 
star. The red stars that you can see in the night sky are generally red giants or super red giants because they're so big, they're emitting an awful lot of radiation. So we see them, they're very visible. We've got yellow stars, white stars and blue white stars. So the red stars are the coolest. So we've got a temperature there, the red stars of 3,500 Kelvin. So Kelvin is another temperature scale. You used to use in degrees Celsius. The problem with degrees Celsius is it's got minus numbers. So if you, if you get an object down and you cool it and you make it colder and colder and colder and colder, you'll reach a point where you can't make it any colder. And that point is called absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees C. It's as cold as you can get. If you're interested in physics and want a little bit of extra background reading, there's quite a lot of stuff about the hunt for absolute zero. It was 20 odd years of intense practical work while they were trying to find what that temperature was. So at that temperature, there's zero energy. So if you imagine you're in a room and you cool it down. By the time you reach absolute zero, the particles of, of gas, the oxygen and the nitrogen particles, molecules in the air will have no energy. So they'll be effectively lying on the floor. They'll have no energy. They won't be moving around, not even with any random motion. So we call that temperature naught Kelvin. So if you wanted to convert Kelvin into degrees C, you've just got to take away that 273. So 3,500 Kelvin's red, 5,000 Kelvin is yellow, white 7,000 Kelvin and up to 25,000 Kelvin for blue. So hotter stars give off more radiation. So if a star's hotter, it'll be brighter. Also though, it gives off more of the lower wavelengths. Blue is a lower wavelength than red. Hotter stars are bluer and brighter. So now, this graph here, if you love, love graphs, this will probably be the highlight of your GCSE physics course. It's probably the most complicated graph that you'll come across because it's got multiple lines on the same graph. So let's try and break it down. You might come across an exam question with that on and we just need to interpret it a bit. So if we have a look at what we've got first. So up the side for the y-axis is the intensity. So that's the amount of energy that's coming off. So the higher the line is up there on the y-axis, the more intense, the brighter it will be. And then along the bottom, we've got the wavelengths in nanometers. So one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine meters. If I just add that little box there that's got the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum on, it might help you a little bit. So we've got the colours of the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet there, the visible end. And then if we go smaller wavelengths, we go to ultraviolet and then X-ray and finally to gamma rays. If we go to bigger wavelengths, we go to infrared, we go to microwaves. And then we'll finally get on to um, radio waves at the, the very biggest wavelengths. So let's pick... Let's pick the line that would represent the sun first. And we said that the sun was at 6,000 Kelvin. So that's, that's the second line down there. So we've got a curved line with a peak. So let's have a look at the peak first. So the peak is around 500 nanometers. So that means that the sun is giving out lots of wavelengths. It's giving out lots of colors. But the most, the highest amount, the peak, is somewhere in the blue part of the spectrum. So it's giving out all those, the main part in the blue. But it is also giving out ultraviolet, that's why you can get some tan. And it's also giving out uh, infrared, so we feel the heat, and some microwaves, and a, a little bit of radio frequencies as well. So if we make the star hotter then, and we go from 6,000 to 7,000, two things happens. Number one, we get a greater intensity. So we get more radiation coming off it. It's about double on that graph there, assuming that it's a linear scale. So for the 6,000 star to the 7,000 star, we end up with greater intensity. But something else happens as well. The graph, the graph shifts to the left. So it shifts to smaller wavelengths. So not only is it giving out 
more intense electromagnetic radiation it's also giving it a shorter wavelength so it's nearer 400 which is um more of a purple color so that would be a very bluey white star at that end now other stars would exist too and they would just go off slightly moving to the left and getting higher each time so in summary exam question then so we've got an example of these multiple graphs wavelength on the bottom intensity up the side what can be concluded about the distribution of the intensity of radiation how that changes with the temperature i'm going to give you three minutes off you go minute left. Okay, should just be finishing off. So, self market, please. Let's have a look at the mark scheme. So, you've got one mark for talking about the intensity of every wavelength increasing. In other words, the graph is always higher than the curve when the temperature is lower. The shorter the wavelength, the more rapidly increases in intensity. So, you're trying to explain the, the actual curve nature of the line there and the peak intensity occurs at a shorter wavelength. Okay, let's have a look at how this affects the Earth's temperature then. So this is related to global warming, which is actually in biology, chemistry and physics. So the temperature of the Earth depends on a couple of things. So we've got infrared radiation, light radiation, all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, are either reflected into space or absorbed by the atmosphere. So if you imagine a time when the Earth was almost like a snowball, which is the case, 
is a lot of the radiation coming from the sun would have been reflected directly back into space so it would have kept the temperature down. So we've got some of that radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere and the surface and some is reflected. And then the Earth is going to start emitting radiation from its atmosphere and from its surface. So you've got radiation in, some of it's reflected, and some of it is then emitted. So it's that balance that determines whether the temperature on the Earth goes up, down, or stays the same. So if there was no atmosphere, the temperature on the surface had dropped to about minus 180 degrees C, which you would see at Mercury, that despite being so close to the sun, because it's got no atmosphere, a lot of radiation is radiated at night, so it cools down very quickly. So the dark side of Mercury at night is incredibly cold and the side facing the sun incredibly hot. So the gases that we have in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, methane, water vapour, absorb the longer wavelength radiation from Earth and prevent it from escaping. So the more of those gases that we have, the more of the radiation that's trapped and then not emitted into space which is why if by human activity we've generated more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's going to reduce the amount of radiation that's emitted, therefore the temperature will rise, global warming. So that's the greenhouse effect. So what we end up with is then that the gases are emitting radiation back towards the surface and not back into space. So this is just representing it with a diagram. So we've got uh, an average mean temperature on the Earth there of 15 degrees C, as it is at the moment. So from the sun on the left, we've got the incident radiant energy is coming in. Some of that is reflected off the atmosphere. The rest is absorbed and then thermal radiation is emitted. So if you've got the amount of energy being absorbed onto the Earth, being the same as the amount of energy emitted from the Earth, then you'll get a constant global temperature on Earth. Any one of those three factors changing can mean that the temperature on Earth changes. So this is how it'll look in an exam question. Something similar to this has come up a couple of times. So we've got a representation of the Earth on the left 200 years ago and then on the right now. We've both got the same amount of incident radiation from space, 170,000 tera watts. Tera as in terabytes, one times 10 to the 12. It shows you how much is reflected and it shows you how much is emitted. So what the question is, question six, explain how the temperature of the Earth and its atmosphere has changed over the last 20 years. So you're not just saying what you think has happened to the temperature, you're trying to explain which factors have caused that change. So try and mention the radiation in, the reflected into space and that emitted from the surface of the Earth. So I'm going to give you three minutes. Your time's up.
finishing off. And then. So the first thing that you should note there is that only one of the numbers is different. So 200 years ago, we got 120,000 terawatts emitted and now we've got 116,620 terawatts emitted. So we've got less terawatts emitted. If you've got less radiation emitted, but the other two factors are the same, the temperature of the Earth is going to increase. So temperature has increased is worth one mark. So what they've got for the second mark in the mark scheme is 200 years ago, the radiation from space and the energy emitted is equal. So therefore that would have kept the temperature constant at the time. And then you need to say less radiation is emitted. Now it's good practice here, although it's not in the mark scheme, is when you're using information that's got data on it, as in numbers, I would quote those in your answer. So I would actually use the numbers as you're answering, just to be on the safe side. Okay, some review questions here. So in your book, jot these down. It comes to three, four, five, six, seven minutes. I'm not going to give you the time on here because some of you will take longer than others. So I suggest you pause the video here and you use those to make notes in your book. It's particularly important if you've found any elements of this lesson difficult. And I would probably guess that quite a few of you have. It's one of the toughest topics that we've got in triple science, particularly the use of the graphs. So ending with a summary slide then, the most important thing is bottom right here, an object that absorbs all radiation falling on it at all wavelengths called a black body. So that's the definition of black body radiation. We've got the diagram of the Earth showing the three factors that are affecting the temperature, a representation of black body radiation top left and an example of the graphs. So pause the video and if you want to, Make a little summary in your book and then you've got some notes. So thanks for working on waves. There's a couple more waves lessons left. So see you next time.